Moving along, let's say that you have an object with fine edge details like this one. Maybe you have a person with a strong hair outline or a furry animal that needs to be silhouetted. In this case, it's hard to use any of the tools we've discussed so far to capture all the fine edge details in a mask. And there's a specialized feature in Photoshop that's used for just this task. It's called Extract, and you choose it from the filter menu. This feature is a huge dialog, and it's a mini application in its own right. I cover it in detail in a subsequent lesson in the section called Extracting Subjects. But what you end up with is a selection that includes fine details like fur that would ordinarily be lost altogether if you were using a regular selection tool or technique. I should say here that if making these fine silhouettes is something that you end up doing a lot, you might want to investigate some third-party software like Knockout by Corel Software or Mask Pro by On One Software that allow you to make professional grade mats using a plugin interface for Photoshop. The next masking function I want to show you is great fun, especially for old timers like me. I'm going to type Q on the keyboard to access the quick mask function. Here you can use any of the painting tools in Photoshop to build a mask on the fly. The interface in Quick Mask is very similar to RubyLith, and it's very intuitive. The way it works is that you paint in black on the areas that will be masked out, and you paint in white on areas that will be selected. And yes, grays have a role here. Paint in shades of gray to include areas of transparency. A simple way to illustrate this is to first fill the whole area with black. Now I'll switch colors to select white, then use a brush to paint on the goat to selectively cut a mask. And you can see the analogy at work here. I'm chipping away or cutting away at the ruby lid. Nice. Now I'll type Q or click on the icon to the left of the quick mask, and you'll see that we've ended up with a selection where I painted in white in the quick mask mode. Now type Q to return. Now to illustrate transparency, I'm going to switch to the gradient tool. I'll choose the radial option and I'll drag a radial gradient from the face of the goat outwards. Now when I return to the selection mode, you'll see that it selected a large area including the areas that were gray in the gradient that I drew only the grays are partially selected. I'll jump the selection to a new layer by typing Command or Control J. Now you can see how the grays brought in transparency while the white areas in the quick mask were fully selected. Quick masks are a great way to build a mask intuitively using friendly painting and editing tools. I also use this mode extensively to create and preview feathered edges or soft edges on my masks, as we'll learn how to do later on in this tutorial. And I save the best for the last, layer masks. To use layer masks is to really build a flexible piece of artwork. It can add to the file size, but nothing compares to the convenience of editing a selection that stays in the file while hiding or showing parts of the artwork. In this file, I need to replace the background with something else that the client will supply. I've created a layer mask on a duplicate layer, which selects the cat but masks the background. Now, when the client provides the artwork, I'll slide it below this layer, and it shows up just where we need it to, thanks to the wonder of layer masks. The beauty of this technique is that we can keep editing the layer mask to include or exclude parts of the artwork, so that this process can go on indefinitely. We do this by targeting the layer mask in the layer palette, and painting in black or white, just as we did before, to show or hide parts of the artwork. If you option or alt-click the layer mask icon, you'll see that it's very similar to the contents of an alpha channel. 
and you can edit it right here using any painting or editing tool of your choice. Option or Alt click it when you're done to view the composite effect. To temporarily turn off a layer mask, shift click it. Sometimes it's nice to do this to see how the edges are being handled by the mask. And this process shows us that indeed our edges do need refining and that's something that I intend to cover as a technique later on in this section. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of masking techniques. In this section, we'll explore all of these techniques further so you'll get a good review by the end.